Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Rao, I'll go to go to you first here, if I can. The uh, Biden administration uh, has prioritized revitalizing uh, the transatlantic alliance uh, and reassuring Europe that, uh, as they like to say, America is back. Um, my concern is that this is just talk um, and that it's not clear what we're uh, getting in return. Uh, so a couple of questions. First, um, thus far, what tangible return on these efforts have we seen? Um, and do you believe the Biden administration is prepared uh, to have the difficult but necessary uh, conversations uh, about, for example, the Europeans actually meeting their uh, two percent obligations under uh, the, their NATO commitment and in increasing uh, their military expenditures. And uh, uh, so let, let's we'll leave it there at this point. We'll, how would you respond to those questions? Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Congressman. Let me perhaps just begin with the with the last the last point on on NATO. Uh, a third of NATO now meets its Wales pledge of spending two percent of um, of their GDP on on defense. France and Norway just crossed that threshold, which is a welcome uh, development. But more needs to be done. Um, more progress needs to be made in this domain, and it does connect uh, to the Asia Pacific region. In the event of 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 combat in Asia Pacific, if there is, for example, a war over Taiwan, the real question is whether or not the United States Navy at a level of 290 ships uh, or so would be able to both supply um, uh, the Asia Pacific and ferry troops across the Atlantic if simultaneously uh, there was a crisis of sorts in Europe. So um, this is not a question of, 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 of American harmony, of American willpower. It's a real question of uh, American capabilities and whether or not they are not strained. And so Europe has to pick up um, the slack, and I think uh, urgently making that case is is hugely important. On on the subject of of um, of transatlantic uh, coordination, I think there have been a few uh, positive examples. On, for example, Belarus, where the United States has worked well um, um, with the Europeans on on coordinating statements. There have been a bevy of releases, including the Microsoft hack um, that was just raised. But on the major fundamental questions that are still uh, outstanding, on the big transatlantic sort of existential questions. We still need progress, and uh, we'll see what the administration produces in the coming months and years. Uh, thank you. I'll, I'll stick with you, uh, Mr. Rao. Um, I'm uh, one of the founders of the Congressional Taiwan Caucus and one of the co-chairs uh, currently of it. Uh, and so I'd like to ask you about Europe's uh, position on, on Taiwan. Um, in a first, uh, this year, the G7 communique uh, underscored quote, the importance of peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait, uh, unquote. Uh, in your opinion, um, what more should the transatlantic alliance do uh, to counter the PRC's growing diplomatic and military uh, pressure against Taiwan? Well, Heather Conley has already outlined a few of the deployments that are that are ongoing, uh, which I do think are helpful. Uh, beyond that, I think developing a common strategic picture is useful, and the U.S. can do that by facilitating connections between our European allies and those frontline states who have really felt the brunt of Chinese aggression and ruthlessness of late. Of late, uh, the United Kingdom, for example, um, uh, in in the wake of the uh, of the of the aggressive um, real erasure of freedom in Hong Kong, and subsequently. Uh, the moves against Australia on the trade front has toughened its line, given its natural and historic links to both of those areas uh, on China. And I think the more that we can connect up on the ministerial level, for example, a two plus two of defense and foreign ministers of our Asian allies, Australia and Japan in particular, and um, our European partners, that would be helpful. But principally, this is really an American sphere of, of military action. Um, and, and what I would like to see is for the Europeans to alleviate American pressure in the Asia Pacific by having a solid presence in the Mediterranean and the North Atlantic, perhaps east of Suez and the North Indian Ocean. Okay, thank you. Let me squeeze one more question. In the previous administration's uh, efforts to counter uh, the Chinese telecommunications firm Huawei, uh, including through the Clean Network Initiative, were quite successful. Um, do you assess that the Biden administration is building uh, on this progress to ensure the safety of telecommunications networks uh, in Europe? Uh, I think that's an, that's an, that's an open question. Clearly, um, there's bipartisan agreement on the importance of, of keeping 5G clean, on keeping next generation telecoms amongst our allies um, clean. Um, and, and so in that sense, I would say yes. 
Um, beyond that, though, I think uh, we really need to push for and address um, how we can uh, extricate ourselves from supply vulnerabilities um, by providing alternatives. And here, um, you know, there's questions about where strategy is going. Are we and the Europeans separately going to pursue a form of industrial strategy, for example, on next generation technologies? Or can we work together, as we did in decades past, through basic research funding, um, perhaps relaxing some competition rules, and thereby generating some consortiums of transatlantic um, uh, private sector um, companies to push forward the frontiers of, of semiconductors, for example. And then it will be easier um, for our allies to feel uh, less the sway or less the pressure of, of, of the Chinese. So I'd say um, the jury's still out, but, um, but I'm hopeful. Thank you. My time's expired, Mr. Chairman. You'll back.